once that walking becomes automatic, now what do you think the implications are if you try to change it? So if our patient learns to walk, and we already watched that piece of videotape of our patient walking with a stroke, once she learns that behavior, what do you think the odds are that we're going to change it? So Bozzelli and colleagues, this was an Italian study, looked at 42 patients who were one year post-stroke. Now that, for those of us who work in outpatient, that's not long. That's, it's considered chronic. The literature kind of disagrees about whether six months or a year is chronic, but certainly a year is considered in the chronic phase of recovery. So these were 42 patients who were only one year post-stroke, all of whom were very highly motivated to change their walking and to improve their walking. So they brought them in and took them into a gait lab. Now in a gait lab, they put little reflective markers on the bony prominences on your greater trochanter, on your knees, on your ankles, and you walk through a special room that has cameras all the way around it. And the, the little markers take the reflections from the cameras and then send it back to a computer and it generates an image for you and gives you all the details. So they, that's expensive too. They brought these people in, videotaped them, did the whole nine yards, did the full gait analysis. And then they treated these people for five days a week for three months. Now how many of you get to treat your patients five days a week for three months? I, I don't know where it is where you are, but in Texas you don't, you're not going to go away with that because nobody's going to pay for it. So three months of therapy, five days a week, there were no detectable changes in their gait. So they got a ton of therapy, they brought them back to the gait lab, retested them, no significant changes in their gait. So what the, the question, the message here rather, is that once it becomes automatic, good luck changing. And I will tell you, after having worked in an outpatient for many years with patients with stroke, I've never successfully changed that pathologic gait. Now I have sped it up. And the literature says that I can, and I agree with that, I can speed up my patients. And sometimes that's, it's a very meaningful goal because remember we said patients with stroke walk very, very slowly. So slowly that they can't integrate back into the community. So if I did speed you up and got you back into the community, that's a very worthwhile thing. But your gait kinematics, that knee hyperextension and stiff leg and step two gait, no luck. So these authors went so far as to suggest it might be a waste of time and resources to even attempt to change walking at that point. Now again, I ask you to put yourself in the shoes of that gal that we watched the videotape. If that were you, and that was a patient of mine who came to the clinic and she had one goal in mind, and that was to change that walking. How disappointing would it be to know that no matter how hard you worked, you might still be stuck with that same walking. And I wish that I could tell you that her walking changed substantively, but it didn't.